sake! You're... you're her. Yep. I've been so excited to kind of take this on, to be able to play a character like Kara. And at the same time, it's overwhelming because it is bigger than anything I've ever experienced. There aren't any other female superheroes on TV. I'm pinching myself all the time, just going, what am I doing? This is awesome. And I am really happy to be part of a show that embraces girl power. She kicks butt. She can be a little bit of a sassy pants and just fighter. Your pod's coordinates are interlocked with kal -El's. You will follow him to Earth. I'm not afraid, Father. At the, at the beginning of the pilot, we see Kara as a young girl on her planet of Krypton. Kara's parents sent her and kal -El off in their own ships and hers kind of got knocked off course and was stuck in the Phantom Zone, which is this area in her galaxy that time doesn't pass. When she got here and Kal-El, her cousin, finds her, he's already grown up and become Superman. He placed me with my adoptive family, the Danvers. I know I'm not your mom's sweetheart, but you're safe here. They had a daughter, Alex. Alex loves Kara tremendously and would do anything for her. But it's an interesting dynamic with the parents. There's comparisons here and there and a lot of pressure for Alex to really take care of Kara and protect her and watch over her. So she was sort of asked to kind of just step aside and hide herself. I work at Catco Worldwide Media, built by my boss, Cat Grant, the most powerful woman in National City. The only reason I bought this building was because it had a private elevator. She's rich, successful, I think she's pretty powerful. Everyone knows the boss from hell. Cat is an acquired taste. And uh, what if you, you have the boss from hell and you happen to be a superhero? And our story begins right at the moment where she decides to actually emerge. Oh my god, you're Jimmy Olsen, the photographer from the Daily Planet. James Olsen. Jimmy Olsen has been around since 1940. We're revamping this character you know, for the 21st century. In this world, James Olsen is, is famous. He's got a Pulitzer, uh, he's Superman's best friend. He's not your neighborhood photographer anymore. Wynn, I need to talk to you on the roof. Wynn works in Catco. The roof? Uh, he's the uh, he's the IT guy. He doesn't fight crime. He's not like a super powerful CEO of a business. He's just like a normal guy. You exposed yourself. Everyone will know about you and you can't take that back. She's a scientist and she's, you know, smart. And so for a lot of reasons, she gets brought into the DEO. The DEO monitors and protects Earth from extraterrestrial presence and or invasion. That means you. When Supergirl arrives, her spaceship drags this other spaceship out of what we call the Phantom Zone. And that ship crashes on Earth along with, along with Kara's. Fort Ross was a prison ship. And these imprisoned aliens uh, run off into various corners of the, of the world. The DEO is formed to kind of track them, capture them, and uh, uh, lock them up. How human is she, even though she's not human, you know? She's relatable and, and has weaknesses and strengths that are uh, things that we can hopefully understand, you know, and, and relate to. There hasn't been this sort of hero for young girls the way guys have sort of always had, you know, from the beginning of time. Everyone, not a girl or boy, man or woman, could relate to Kara's journey. And I think she's meaningful for what she stands for. Bravery and hope and positivity personified. She's a beacon for a lot of people, and be included. Now, don't you have a city to protect? You know, up, up, and away? 